What is up everybody and welcome back to the BB of Bus. Today we have a fun, quick, short little video on how to build some barn doors. I found some different materials online and I'm gonna combine what I've learned and share that with you. And maybe this is helpful for you to build a gate or a barn door or needless to say, the methods that I found, I would not have thought of by myself. And I'm sure there's some of you out there that are gonna find this really helpful. So without further ado, let's get right into it and let's build a barn door. All right, step one is gonna to be to assemble our materials. I have some bolt hooks from Ace Hardware along with the partner strap pieces to put up a gate. Pretty straightforward pieces of hardware. You stick a bolt through a post, hang the hanger on there, and then bolt your gate to that strap. I also have the accompanying hardware that it's gonna to take to attach my doors to those straps. I have my fascia material. I'm going with some pretty straightforward siding pieces from Home Depot that I had them cut in half so that I didn't have to take home 16 foot lengths. So our door's gonna be eight feet tall. I chose that material because it's the cheapest and most coverage for my dollar. These doors right now, they're really just to add a marginal level of security and air movement and just some control to the space. They're not supposed to be bulletproof. They're not supposed to be outrageously robust because again, this is a temporary structure. So these are temporary doors. That's the fascia. And then I have some salvage lumber from the rest of the property that we're gonna rip and use as our cross pieces to kind of go with that rustic barn door look. After gathering our materials, it's now time to measure, mark, and drill all four holes for the bolt hooks to go through our side posts of our opening. The nice part about these bolt hooks is that having two bolts and two washers means that we can adjust them in and out at any point to determine the depth that we want coming off of the wall. This can make a difference in how wide the door opens depending on the depth of your jam. It also makes a difference in the support depending on how far out you're hanging your bolts. The farther in close to the jam, the more supported it's gonna be. The farther out you have it hanging on the very end of the bolt, it's gonna have a lot more torque on that bolt going through your jam. Keep that in mind when you're hanging your bolt hooks, but now that those are all hung, we can go and tighten them with a set of wrenches just to really squeeze down. Let's rip our cross members and then put those onto the straps that will then hang on our bolt hooks. Now with our cross members ripped, we can align, mark, drill, and lightly bolt these down to our cross member. Since I'm doing this by myself, I can't put these straps on, have someone help me hold it up and mark it. So that way I can bolt one side down, hang that on one side and that's set and secure and in position while I hold up the other end and mark it according to how I've set my hanger bolts previously. On the other side of these bolts, we're putting three pieces of hardware, a washer to distribute the pressure, a lock washer to keep things tight, then the nut to tighten everything together. Now that we have the two cross members up, we want to get some structural rigidity in the doors before we cut them down the middle and let them open. So what we're gonna do is put up all of our fascia pieces and then our diagonal, and then we're gonna be ready to open those doors up. You're probably wondering how are we getting these to be flush once we get to the bolts? Well, we're gonna hold this up in place as best we can, give it a tap with a hammer from the backside, and then these bolts are gonna leave nice little marks for us to drill some holes out on these boards. Once those holes are drilled, we'll just throw it right back up and those bolts and the nuts and the washers will have a place to live through the holes that we put in these boards. And that'll keep the front nice and flush. Now that those are all in, it's time to take a rip saw right through the middle and cut out an inch wide chunk from the middle. That way they're gonna have comfortable room to swing with each other and not be rubbing in between. If we only did one pass with the saw blade in the middle, that eighth inch gap would not be enough to really let them swing freely from each other, especially with the expansion and contraction over time. What I'm gonna do first before I cut them apart though, is I'm gonna attach the latch. That way, once everything lines up, once they're in, the latch is ready to go and I don't have to do that on loose hanging floppy doors. A 
throw on the latch, and then we'll cut them apart. And just like that, we now have some barn doors on this opening. It's a pretty easy project, super simple method of construction, but by leaving those joists across the middle intact until the very end, our doors now line up evenly and they're hung nice and straight. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully that helped you learn something new. Hopefully you learned a method that's gonna work well for your project or your barn doors. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you here next time in the BBU bus. Bye.